Obviously what we'd like to have is we'd like to have a single dose cure so you can go out into an area where there's a lot of malaria and you can give patients the tablet and you can be sure that they've taken it. There are two stages to the approach. So the, the front runners, if you like, are the synthetic endoperoxide. So we say, well, if there's a problem with artemisinin resistance and we don't know how big the problem is yet, then what we need to do is we need to have other drugs and we have other drugs from the same class that we need to try out. So we have three synthetic peroxides which could be tested in patients. What's interesting at the moment is that there aren't sufficiently large numbers of artemisinin resistant patients to make clinical trials easy. So that tells, it gives you an idea um, how much it's spreading at the moment. And also to say that the artemisinin combination therapies that we have are still working even in the artemisinin resistance areas. So the, the stories we have about resistance are the early warning signals, the first signals that we have a problem. So the second stage of our research pipeline is to say, well, we'll need completely new classes of drugs. And there we have a whole series of uh, projects. We have over 50 projects. Some of them are actually done with universities. Some of them are done with pharmaceutical companies. And what we've seen is we've seen a real growth in the number of pharmaceutical partners who are interested in doing basic research, discovering new medicines. So that's really exciting. So there are three things that come out of the research agenda for eradication. The first is to say that not just treating the patients for having falciparum malaria, what we have to make sure is they don't pass the disease on to somebody else. The second group, and it's less important for Africa, the second group of medicines we need are things which eradicate vivax. The third class of medicines which are going to be important in the long term, and this is really when we clean up uh, in 15, 20 years time, is to have new generations of medicines which will protect people who don't have malaria. So you can imagine that as the number of cases go down, there will be times when you have to protect people. So new generations of prophylaxis. I think it's an audacious goal. I mean, I joined the same month as Melinda French Gates announced that you know, it was unacceptable to have uh, children die of malaria. So for somebody who has a relatively long career ahead of me in malaria, then it's a really exciting goal. Uh, I think that the idea that we could eradicate in the lifetimes of the people at this meeting is a good one to have. Uh, I think that you see the early data on controlling malaria with bed nets, with insecticides and with drugs is going really nicely. So I think it's a goal. I think the big danger is that people are going to start getting fatigued after 10 or 15 years. So the question is really, how do we keep up the momentum? How do we keep up the initiative? What are we going to do when instead of having 300 million patients, we have 300,000 patients or 300 patients? Because we've got to keep going.